My name is Michaela Wood, and I have been working with Dr. Che and Dr. Gonzalez on the impacts of recessions on individual happiness. In September of 2008, the stock market collapsed with the Dow Jones losing over 777 points in one day. This was the largest recorded drop until March of 2020. In 2008, the S&P 500 fell to 40% of its record high, which had occurred in 2007. Unemployment rose from 4% to a record high of 10%. 60% of Americans saw a decline in their wealth, while 25% of Americans lost half of their wealth. Since the Great Recession, the economic study of happiness has greatly increased, with research being done on the effects of the stock market, unemployment, and loss of wealth on happiness. In D10's 2011 work, The Financial Crisis and the Well-Being of Americans, he notes that the stock market has a strong positive correlation with subjective well-being, or SWB. Using the General Social Survey, O'Connor looks at the trends of different demographics and notes that foreign-born individuals have the largest decline from their happiness trend during the recession, and that men had a larger decline than women. She also notes that unemployment has a strong negative impact on the happiness of different groups. In 2016, Eichert et al. used a difference in differences approach to determine that those approaching retirement had the largest decline in happiness compared to other age groups. For our study, we will be looking at the relationship between drops in the stock market and happiness. We will also break down individual wealth to see if exposure to the stock market causes a change in happiness. We also want to know if those with more exposure to the stock market experience a greater change in happiness during a downturn than those who are not exposed to the market. To conduct our research, we will be using the Health and Retirement Study, or HRS. This study is conducted by the University of Michigan. The HRS is an extensive survey conducted every two years. The participants are age 50 and older, which is beneficial because it allows us to look at individuals who are retired and are approaching retirement. The survey collects information on an individual level, so we have data for the respondent and their spouse. The HRS adds participants to their survey every six years to keep the number of participants constant. The survey consists of questions about their health, finances, employment, demographics, family and household structure, and more. Because the questions in the first few waves are inconsistent, we have chosen to begin with wave four. In the HRS, they use questions from the CESD to gather data on participants' mental health. The CESD is used by psychologists as a way to diagnose mental illness. Here, we only use a portion of the questions as a way to collect data. The HRS uses the questions regarding if the respondent felt depressed, felt everything was an effort, had restless sleep, felt happy, felt lonely, could not get going, and enjoyed life. They then add these up to get a total CESD score, which ranges from 1 to 8. The exact wording for the question is, Now think of the past week and the feelings you have experienced. Please tell me if each of the following was true for you much of the time during the past week, yes or no. We will primarily be concerned with the individual components of the CESD questions. To see if our data was consistent with other data sets, we plotted the averages of stock and happiness from each wave. The average amount of stock owned represented on the blue line falls during the recession of 2000 to 2002, and again from 2008 to 2010. Happiness, depicted on the orange line, also declines in 2002, and again in 2008. This graph gives us a rough idea about how the stock market and happiness may be related. To more carefully analyze the data, we will run multiple regressions using ordinary least squared. To estimate the relationship between happiness and the stock market, we use the model happiness equals beta 0 plus beta 1 times downturn plus beta 2 times exposure plus beta 3 times downturn times exposure plus the sum 
of beta x plus u. Since there are eight components of happiness, we ran eight regressions using the OLS, or Ordinary Least Squares, estimator to obtain our coefficient. In the HRS, one did not mean the same thing for each component of happiness, so we reversed some of the variables so that one is always related to happiness. In our model, downturn is used to indicate if the respondent was interviewed during a drop in the stock market, where one means that they were interviewed during a recession. Exposure represents the percentage of a person's total wealth that is exposed to the stock market. To determine if those with stocks were impacted differently during a recession, we have multiplied downturn by exposure. In our model, beta 1 is the impact on happiness during a recession for those with no finances in the stock market. Beta 3 is the differential impact on the downturn for those whose entire wealth is in the stock market. For example, if beta 1 and beta 3 are both negative, then the downturn lowers happiness for everyone, but even more for those with high exposure to the stock market. X stands for other variables used to control for changes in happiness. Such variables include health, marital status, age, total wealth, and employment status. U is our error term. Here we have the estimated coefficients for our variables with each component of happiness. Because our dependent variables are binomial, we can interpret the coefficients as percentages. According to our model, there is not significant evidence that exposure has an impact on happiness. There is statistically significant evidence that a downturn in the stock market causes individuals' happiness to decline. It is estimated that during the downturn, respondents are 8.7% less likely to answer that they are not depressed, 12.4% less likely to answer that they have had good sleep, and 8.4% less likely to say that they are happy. Since the interaction term is not statistically significant, we can say that exposure to the stock market during a downturn does not lead to a greater change in happiness. To continue our studies on the implications of recessions on happiness, we will focus on different subsamples of the HRS. By using difference and differences, we can determine if certain subsamples are more impacted by downturns in the market. Certain subsamples we are interested in are those with pension plans versus those with defined contribution plans, such as a 401k, those who are working versus those who are not, those who are older than 65 and those who are younger, and those who are retired and those who are not. Thank you.